Scholastic Scrimmage is provided in part by the Air Products Foundation. The foundation is supported by donations from Air Products and Chemicals Incorporated as a charitable organization whose contributions provide support for educational, cultural, health, and community programs in the Lehigh Valley. Proud to support the finest in education and in public television, we are the people of Muhlenberg College. From UGI, your natural gas company, keeping your home warm and cozy and the environment clean for over 100 years. From Meridian Bank, a full financial service institution with more than 250 banking locations in eastern Pennsylvania and Delaware. Meridian, the professionals with a personal touch, is proud to be part of Channel 39's programming. The series is also made possible by Channel 39 School Services participating districts. WLVT-TV presents Scholastic Scrimmage, a weekly program featuring teams from Lehigh Valley High Schools in a contest of quick recall. Tonight's teams are from Jim Thorpe High School and Nazareth High School. Your host for Scholastic Scrimmage is Harry Price. Good evening and welcome again to Scholastic Scrimmage. We're going to meet the teams and uh, say hello to the contestants and also to the coaches. Then we'll begin the contest. From Jim Thorpe High School, Rich Snyder is a senior. Nick Roberti is a senior. The captain, Tim Warren, is a junior. Shelley Miller is a junior. And the coach is Jim Hawes, teacher of mathematics and computer science. <laughs> From Nazareth High School, Zach O'Neill, a junior. The captain, Christine Turzo, is a senior. Paul Mertz is a junior. Brian Howard is a junior. And the coach is Woody Frederick, teacher of mathematics. Channel 39 is pleased to announce that at the conclusion of the series after the championship contest, the Air Products Foundation will present a $2,000 scholarship award to the championship high school and a $1,000 scholarship award to the runner-up high school. Both awards will be in the names of the Scholastic Scrimmage teams. Remember, the answers to the questions on Scholastic Scrimmage require rapid recall of factual information and aren't necessarily indicative of academic training. The rules for the contest are as follows. On toss-up questions, you'll be given 10 points for each correct answer, and 10 points will be deducted for an incorrect response. If you answer incorrectly, then the opposing team will have an opportunity to answer without penalty. They'll receive five points for a correct answer in this situation. Of course, each correct answer to a toss-up question gives you an opportunity to answer a bonus question without penalty. Team members may confer only on the bonus questions, and the answers to these questions should be given to me by the two team captains. A buzzer will signal the end of the contest. If it sounds while a question is being asked, the game stops. If the buzzer goes off while you're answering, however, you will be permitted to complete your answer, but no bonus questions will be asked. Are there any questions? If not, we'll begin with the first toss-up. You're looking at a 15-point bonus. About... Uh, only about half of the original 102 settlers survived the winter of 1620-21. to 21. Yet when their ship sailed back to England in the spring, none of them left. What was the name of their ship? Jim Thorpe, Shelley. Mayflower. You are correct, and that's all about Plymouth Colony. Here's your bonus, a 15-pointer for you and the team, Tim. Tim gives me the answers. For five points each, name any three of the five largest cities on the American shores of the Great Lakes. Each one of the five cities is in a different state. Tim? Chicago, Detroit, Indianapolis. Chicago, Detroit, Indianapolis were given. Chicago and Detroit are correct. The other three, however, would be Milwaukee, Cleveland, Buffalo, and you get 10 out of a possible 15 on the bonus. You toss up going for a 10-pointer this time. Which book, and I want the title of this, is remembered largely for its Yankee overseer, Simon Legree? Jim Thorpe Shelley. Uncle Tom's Cabin. You are correct by Harriet Beecher Stowe. And your bonus, again for Jim Thorpe. What war largely served as the setting for the novel by William Faulkner entitled Absalom, Absalom? Tim? Response. 
No, no response to that. It would be the American Civil War. Um, by the way, the, uh, that particular book was published in 1936 by Faulkner. Going for a 10-point bonus this time, toss-up. With the exception of peroxides, oxygen in compounds always has an oxidation number of what? Jim Thorpe, Tim. Negative two. Correct, Tim. And again, your bonus. Five points apiece. I want you to name each of the following. First, the backboned animals with the long, legless body covered by dry scales. Tim? Snakes. Correct. The only mammals that can truly fly on their own. Tim? Bats. You are correct again. You've got your ten. Toss up. It's a mathematics toss up. You may want to use paper and pencil. May not. If on a map, one sixth of an inch equals twenty miles, how many miles separate two cities that are three inches apart on the map? Jim Thorpe, Tim. 360. You are correct. And your bonus on the monitor. I want you to tell me, uh, what is the missing term in that magic square? Jim Thorpe, let's go, Tim. 14. It's not 14. It's, it's 4. If you add it up all of the columns, they would each uh, be 34. All of the rows would also be 34. And the missing link would have to be 4. Going for a 10-pointer, toss up. All of the English rulers since William I, William the Conqueror, have been crowned in what church? Nazareth, Christine. Westminster Abbey. Correct, near the Houses of Parliament in London. Here's your bonus, Christine. And team, again now, Christine, would you please give me the answer? Name the tiny European nation whose capital is Faduz. Let me spell that. F-A-D-U-Z. It's pronounced Faduz. Christine? Liechtenstein. Correct. Toss up. Ten point bonus. For ten points, and no correcting yourself once you've begun, I want you to spell the word pharmaceutical. Jim Thorpe, Shelley. P-H-A-R-M-A-C-E-U-T-I-C-A-L. Correct, Shelley. Bonus 10-pointer. Nick really needed some cash, but the only person who would lend it to him was Frank the Grubber, who actually uh, charged 28% interest per week. Beginning with the letter U, what do we call this act of lending money at exorbitant rates of interest? Tim? No response. No response. It would be usury. And let me spell that. U-S-U-R-Y. Toss-up. It's a visual toss-up. Be on the uh, uh, monitor there in front of you. That bat column, and, and that's a baseball bat, uh, by Oldenburg, is seen with the Sears Tower on the left. And what city is the sculpture? Nazareth? Brian. Chicago. Cor it is correct. And what city is the sculpture located done by Claes Oldenburg, who's in a leading uh, that sculpture, uh, American pop artist, uh, same school as Andy Warhol, etc. Here's your bonus, a 10-pointer for Nazareth. According to an Irving Berlin song, what do you have to keep you warm? No response. No response. Uh, maybe this, this is uh, first published, I think, in about 1938. I've got my love to keep me warm. Going for a 10-point bonus. Toss-up. I want you to name the clear colorless solution of hydrogen chloride that is so corrosive that even small amounts can cause severe burns. Jim Thorpe Rich. Hydrochloric acid. You are correct, and its formula is HCl. Your bonus, 10-pointer, Jim Thorpe. The following compounds, when, dis when dissolved in water, are electrolytes. Indicate whether each of the following is a strong or a weak electrolyte. First one, sulfuric acid. Tim? Weak. No, it is strong. The second one, sodium hydroxide. Tim? Weak. It is also strong. And the uh, 
the strength is determined by the concentration of ions in solution. <coughs> Going for a 10-point bonus. Toss-up. Might want paper and pencil again. It's mathematics. A cube has a volume of 27 cubic inches. What is the area of one of its faces? Nazareth, Paul. Nine s square centimeters. Uh, w judges, will you accept? Nine square... E we'll accept it. You got the uh, right thing. Bonus 10-pointer for five points apiece. Answer each of the following. A triangle and a circle can intersect in at most six points. If the triangle is circumscribed about the circle, how many points will the two figures have in common? Christine? Three. Three is correct. If the measure of one of two congruent angles of an isosceles triangle is 20 degrees, what is the degree measure of the third angle? Uh, Paul, you'll have to give it to me. It's a bonus. 140. 140. 40 is correct. Going for a 15-point bonus. Toss-up. Name the two South American countries below the equator whose names end in the letter Y. Nazareth, Brian. Uruguay and Paraguay. Correct. And your bonus, a 15-pointer for five points apiece. Name three of the other four South American countries located entirely below the equator. Christine? Argentina, Chile, and um, Ecuador. Argentina and Chile are correct. Ecuador is not. It would be Peru or Bolivia. Peru and Bolivia are the other two. We're going to give you 10 out of a possible 15. We're going to take a break now. At half, it is Jim Thorpe, 80. Nazareth, 70. During our contest, Rich Snyder, uh, first round, we always ask our contestants to tell us about their families. And would you begin, please? Surely. Uh, Mom's a first grade teacher in Northern Lehigh School District. My stepfather is retired purchasing agent from General Motors. He currently drives bus for Jim Thorpe School District. Thank you very much, Rich. And we'll go over to Nick Roberti. My father is an attorney in Jim Thorpe. My mother is an administrator at Northampton Community College. I have a younger brother who's in 11th grade at Jim Thorpe High, an uh, older brother in real estate, and another older brother who's a musician. Thank you, Nick. Captain Tim Warren. My mother is a registered nurse. My father is a Lutheran minister. And I have a brother in 7th grade at Jim Thorpe. Thank you. I was just getting a little drink of water there. Shelley Miller. My father's a welfare case worker. My mother works for a private company, and I have a brother in 8th grade. Thanks, Shelley. And thanks to Jim Thorpe over to Nazareth. Zach O'Neill. Uh, my father is an accountant. Uh, my mother is a baker. Uh, I have three brothers, Aaron, Seth, and Connor. Thanks, Zach. Captain Christine Turzo. My father is a physician, and my mother teaches third grade at Bushkill Elementary School. Thank you, Christine. Paul Mertz. My father is a teacher at Nazareth, and my mother is a uh, secretary for her Boyle Associates. I have one brother and one sister, both younger. Thanks, Paul. And finally, Brian Howard. My mother's a computer programmer. My father is a plant manager for a packing company, and I have a sister in third grade, Lower Nazareth. Thank you, uh, Brian. Thanks to Nazareth. Again, the score at half, very close. 80 for Jim Thorpe, 70 for Nazareth. We're going to begin our second half with the toss-up, and we're preparing for a 10-point bonus. Here's your toss-up. What special usage label would a dictionary probably have for the following words? Zap, raunchy, funky. Jim Thorpe, Shelley. Slang. Correct. And your bonus, a 10-pointer. It was the most famous library of antiquity. It was the principal center of Hellenistic culture under the Ptolemies. It contained hundreds of thousands of manuscripts. In what city was this library located? Tim? Rome. Not in Rome. It was in Alexandria, Egypt, uh, founded in 322 B.C. by Alexander the Great. Toss-up, looking at a 10-pointer. A person exploring a large cavern decorated with stalactites is in a formation composed usually of what kind of rock? Jim Thorpe Rich. Granite. Incorrect. Over to Nazareth, Zach. Limestone. Limestone is correct. Calcium carbonate. Here's your bonus, a 10-pointer. Give me the standard biological term, beginning with the letter S, for the breathing holes on the sides of the thorax and abdomen of an insect.
Christine? Spiral. Spiral, not close enough. It's uh, close. Spiracles or spiracles. Going for a 10 point bonus. Toss up. Mathematics, write these down. 2 is to 17 as 14 is to what? Jim Thorpe Bridge. 119. 119 is correct. Bonus 10 pointer for Jim Thorpe. What is the principal square root of the following quantity? It's on the monitor there. X squared plus X plus 1 fourth. Tim? No response. No response. Uh, it would be the absolute value of the quantity X plus one half principal square root 20 uh, I was going to give the number of the question I don't usually do that here's your current events toss up during the intervention against Panama a US Army captain commanded a military police unit in combat against the Panamanian defense forces what was unusual and historic that's Nazareth Bryan she was a woman uh, we will accept what was unusual and ex historic about that specific combat operation. The captain was a woman. Captain Linda Bray, for the first time in uh, American history, led government troops into battle. Here's your bonus, a 10-pointer. First Lady Barbara Bush is currently receiving radiation treatment to her eyes to relieve persistent double vision, discomfort, and tears that she suffered as a part of a, a thyroid condition. Mrs. Bush's uh, affiliation, or affliction, I should say, is an autoimmune disease. What is the name of the First Lady's disease? Christine? Parkinson's disease? Not Parkinson's. It's Graves' disease, G-R-A-V-E-S. It's named for Robert Graves, a 19th century physician. Point for a 10-pointer, toss-up. A theory was promulgated in the 19th century in England that Francis Bacon was actually the author of all the works of what British author? Jim Thorpe. Nick? Shakespeare. Correct. It was discounted or has been discounted as Nick knows by most scholars that he was in fact not. Bonus 10 pointer. What Asian said around 490 BC, the superior man thinks of virtue, the small man thinks of comfort. The superior man thinks of the sanctions of law. The small man thinks of favors which he may receive. This is a bonus for Jim Thorpe. Tim? Confucius. Confucius. Um, Asian, 490 BC. Uh, you are correct. It comes from the Confucian Analects, a collection of all of his uh, sayings. Going for a 10 point bonus. It's a listening. Uh, and I want you to listen to the excerpt, uh, which is a piece entitled Marsh Slav. just heard was written in 1876 for a benefit concert for the Serbian victims of Turkish oppression. For 10 points, which one of the following was its composer? Beethoven, Brahms, Bartok, or Tchaikovsky? Nazareth, Zak. Tchaikovsky. Tchaikovsky is correct. Peter Illich. Tchaikovsky, uh, the eminent Russian composer, and you are correct, we're going to give you a bonus 10-pointer. Most musical instruments can be classified as belonging to one of four groups, brasses, strings, woodwinds, or percussion. I'll name two instruments, and for 10 points each, I want you to identify the groups to which each belongs. Your first one is flute. Christine? Woodwind. Correct. Second one is lute, L-U-T. Christine? String. You are correct again. You've got your 10. Going for another 10-point bonus, here's your toss-up. The horizontal convergence of moist air toward a center or line of low barometric pressure is the most important basic cause of what? Jim Thorpe, 10. Precipitation. Correct. 
And your bonus, a 10-pointer. It's a bonus question of the human nervous system, Tim and Teen. In a reflex arc, only three neurons are involved. One of these is an interneuron, or some people might call it an association neuron. For five points each, name the other two uh, types of neurons. Tim? Receptor neuron and motor neuron. I'll accept uh, motor neuron. I'm not going to accept receptor. We call it sensory, and I think that's pretty much accepted. Sensory and motor neuron. I'm going to give you 5 out of 10. Going for a 10-pointer again, here is your toss-up. Which state's flag features the date of December 7th, 1787, the date on which the Constitution was first ratified? Jim Thorpe, Shelley. Delaware. Correct. The first state. Bonus 10-pointer. I'm going to describe two actions or procedures which provide voters with a certain amount of direct control over lawmaking. For five points each, I want you to name them. First one, beginning with the letter I, the procedure by which voters can propose a law and compel a popular vote on its adoption. Tim? No response. It's called uh, an initiative. Initiative. Second one, beginning with the letter R, the procedure in which a law proposed by a legislative body is included on the ballot for approval or disapproval by the voters. Tim? Referendum. Correct. You have five out of ten. Again, we're looking at a ten-point bonus. Your toss-up. What are two possible ways to express the past tense of the verb S-I-N-K, sink? Nazareth, Brian. Sunk and sank. You are correct in both cases. Bonus 10-pointer. It is better to know a little about everything than a great deal about only one thing. For 10 points, what famous 17th century French mathematician, physicist, and philosopher made that observation? Christine? Pascal. You are correct. Blaise Pascal. Going for a 10-point bonus. What is the value, and this is going to be on the monitor here. Now listen carefully. What is the value of x if the square root of the quantity 7x plus 5 is equal to 3? Dismissed it, Christine. The buzzer rang before Christine did. Uh, it's 4 divided by 7. 4 7 so you square both sides and then solve the equation. Going for a 10-point bonus. Toss-up. More than 60 people were convicted of criminal charges stemming from Watergate. But Richard Nixon... Oh, let's try that again. But Richard Nixon was pardoned by... Hmm. Nazareth, Christine. Ford. Joe Ford, about a month after Nixon's resignation, and that was years ago, August 9th, 1974, hard to believe, 15 years. Bonus, 10-pointer. For five points each, identify the following concerning the year 1987. The leader who, in a speech at the Berlin Wall, challenged the Soviet leader, if you seek peace, come here to this gate, tear down this wall. Christine? Reagan. President Reagan is correct. He was over in Europe, in Berlin. Uh, again, the leader who won the 1987 Nobel Peace Prize and the name of the Central American... It's a bonus. I'm going to continue. And the name of the Central American country of which he is the president. Judges... Judges feel that I should start from the beginning to be fair. I want the leader who won the 1987 Nobel Peace Prize in the name of the Central American country of which he is the president. Christine. Arias, Costa Rica. You are correct on both counts. Oscar Arias or Arias uh, Sanchez of Costa Rica, president of Costa Rica. Now, that gives us a final score of Nazareth 145 and Jim Thorpe 140. Outstanding contest. Uh
We want to thank Jim Thorpe for participating. You were outstanding. Uh, Rich and Nick, uh, you are both seniors. We want to wish you success for the remainder of the academic year and on into college. Tim and Shelley, we hope we see you again next year. Nazareth, we congratulate you. We're going to see you back here in the second round, late March, against the winner of next week's contest. And next week, we will have contestants from Southern Lehigh and Easton High School. This is Harry Price. Thank you for being with us, and good night. participate.